Hey, it's Greg from Cutting Edge Stencils, and we are taking this inexpensive IKEA mirror. I fell in love with the style, the shape of this, uh, and we are going to do our Raja Bone Inlay Stencil. Now look at this, you can buy a mirror like this uh, for actually thousands of dollars, but we're gonna replicate one and give you this amazing look for literally 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Uh, this is our Raja stencil kit. If you come down here and take a peek, uh, this is great for furniture, for tabletops, for mirror frames, for, for projects like this. It gives such an amazing, rich, expensive, dramatic look. So, so easy. Uh, Jana has researched these patterns and drawn them herself, so they're very special and unique. Uh, so let's jump right into the project here. So we've got the mirror. Now these IKEA uh, finishes, they're a little strange. What they are is actually a very thin laminate, and it's almost like a paper laminate on here. So adhesion is important. So what we do with this is we want to do two things. We want to clean it, make sure it's uh, wax and grease free. And also we want to use usually an acrylic paint because it has very good tooth, very good adhesion. It'll grab onto the surface and that's what we want. So here's what I would do is the first thing I would do is take a little bit of denatured alcohol. I have some right here. And this is a great way to just clean off the grease and if there's any pledge or anything like that on there. You can also use rubbing alcohol, but this, this is a, a good way to go, denatured alcohol. So I have a little on my rag here, on my paper towels, and I'm just going to make sure that this is wax and dirt free. We then, what I would do is measure this and give myself some center reference points and that's what I've done so I take my tape measure here and we give this a measure here it is 75 inches 37 and a half inches I give myself a little white dot using a wax pencil so I did 37 and a half here 37 and a half here come down here we've got 37 so we've got 18 and a half. I did the same thing. I gave myself a dot here, and I think I gave myself a dot here. If not, I'm gonna do it right now. 18 and a half, beautiful. So the deal is, is you don't start on an, on an edge or a corner and work your way across because you're not gonna have a centered pattern. So we've got a center motif in this uh, large panel here, as you can see. And so what I want to do is I want to start it in the center. This is going to look best there. And I'm going to work my way out. And then if I have to do a little fudging on the corners to make them look good, I'll do that. But the eye is first going to go to whether or not this is centered. If this is six inches off to the right or left, it's going to look a little strange. So I have used some repositionable spray adhesive. we got a couple right here. Uh, you can use some 3M. You can use some Elmer's. It just needs to be a decent reposition positionable spray adhesive. Now, you can see what I've done here. I've started here and I have worked my way out. Now, since I'm doing the top part of the mirror here, I have to flip this over. So uh, I have Color Traditions uh, acrylic here, uh, probably bought it at Michael's. Uh, we tend to use what we have in the house. And this is mushroom. Now, I'm gonna show you two different ways to do this. I'm gonna show you how to use a, a roller very fast and how to use a brush which is also fast but gives you a little bit more control in some ways about say how opaque or translucent you want your finish to be so I've got my acrylic and I'm gonna pour it right here on my little tray okay and I've got my dense foam two inch roller you must use a dense foam roller uh, very smooth. If it's a very smooth roller, you're going to get a very smooth finish, and that means you're going to have little to no bleed, and that's what we're looking for here. We don't just plow it through the paint. We load it so it's even on the roller, okay? We don't want it stripey, so we, we load it and load it a little bit at a time, a little bit, then I roll it on the surface of my paper plate or my little uh, paper dish here, and I'm trying to distribute the paint evenly in the roller so it doesn't go on stripey. 
So let's bring it up top here and we're going to start the project. Okay, you see what we're doing here? So I've got my stencil position. I've got my two inch dense foam roller loaded. I'm going to start with a light to medium pressure. And this is where it gets fun. This is so easy. Now the temptation is to push hard and cover it fast and move on. No, this is where you need to chill out a little bit, take your time, build up your coverage, do not over roll. You don't wanna be cleaning that up. We don't wanna get into that right now. If, you're, if you think you might over roll, just put some tape around the edge and give yourself a slightly larger border to work with. But I'm gonna quickly roll this and I'm gonna build it up a little bit. And as my roller starts to distribute the paint onto the surface, I can start to press harder. And that's what I'm doing. I'm pressing a little harder now because my roller has less paint in it and I have less chance of it bleeding. So I'm building it up, I'm building it up. Uh, that was my first load on the roller, so I'm gonna need a little more paint because we're just getting the, the roller loaded up. Once you get your roller loaded up for the project, uh, it, it, you have to load it less because it, it, it's a little rough. Okay, so I'm gonna come back down and load up a little bit more paint. Okay, same thing. Slowly build up the saturation on your roller in an even manner. Now, sometimes <clears throat> you might want to offload your roller onto paper towels. In this case, I'm just palleting it and just uh, distributing the paint evenly into the roller right on my plate here. And I can see and, and feel in, in the way it feels that it's nice and even and it feels good. So back up top and I'll push it a little bit harder and it's looking a little bit better. You may want it to be slightly faded <clears throat> here or there. It's going to give it a very natural look. If everything was the same exact um, opacity, the same exact tonality, it wouldn't look so real. So I try to have some variation in my stencil just as bone would have. And I think I'm about ready to peel this. A little bit more here. All right, let's see what we've got here. You see how easy this is? and how great this looks. Okay, so I'm gonna miter this corner, so I wanna mask off the area that I've already done. So I just take some inch and a half or two inch blue painter's tape, I put it right in this miter. I'm actually recycling tape, I do it all the time. Just burnish the edge. You don't need to burnish this whole thing. You're just covering the surface so the paint doesn't get rolled on there. You're not sealing it. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this side over here. And I'm gonna take another piece of tape that I have. I'm gonna miter this corner just like so. Bam, ready to go. Okay, so the way this inlay is designed is there's not exactly uh, registration marks. You're not aligning it with pre-painted areas. We just look at the design and you see how you've got this half a little um, starburst here and I've got one here. So I'm gonna finish it, but I'm gonna have my space between it, what we call negative space, the same or working with the negative space that I see in the whole pattern. So I just want that to be, say, a quarter inch away. So I'm going to line this up. I'm going to, uh, it's upside down, boom. I'm going to line this up like this. I see it. I'm going to do a little peek through. I'm going to slide it over. I'm going to give myself that same negative space. And I can see through the stencil a little bit. Pack that down. Great. Okay, so you can see I did a little overroll here. You just take a little bit of a wet paper towel or a great trick is a baby wipe. Have a baby wipe handy, cleans up the mess really quickly and easily if it's still a little bit wet, even if it's dry a little bit. We always used to keep some baby wipes handy when we were doing the decorative painting. Okay, this is just about there. We've seen this before. This is how easy it is. It moves very quickly. Now, after I do this, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do this beautiful little border. 
This Rajah kit has a few different border pieces to choose from. So the layout, as I said, is very important. When you have your project, you take the stencils out and you start messing and you start laying them around and you start, uh, take a wax pencil and you can actually trace some areas so you can see what it would look like and see what the spacing should be. A little bit more paint and then this is done. We'll do that border. As I said, we have a little bit of a faded look. It's gonna give us the natural tonal variations that you might see in a real bone inlaid piece of furniture. Okay, I'm gonna pull this down. Look at that, awesome. Okay, it's border time. I'm gonna place this here because it's just super convenient. So this is our border Raja inlay number four, and I chose this to be my outside edge border. You can see it down here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this little uh, floret as my center piece. So I have my little center dot here. I can actually see where the center of my design is. I've trimmed my stencil so it's the perfect border. So I just have to run it up to the edge and I know it's 5 8 It's just a real easy way to do it instead of having to position this. You could also put a little black mark with a, a Sharpie on your stencil to help you align it and keep it straight. So I'm going to now, I see my white dot dead center. I'm going to drop this right where it needs to be dead center. And I'm going to line it up right across the edge there and you can see how that's going to work and this one i'm going to do with a brush right we have these wonderful uh professional stencil brushes here that are boiled and flagged bristles we, we really love them uh, it really helps to have quality tools so what i'm going to do is i'm going to dip just the tips into the paint see that just the tips so i have a little bit in there then i'm going to do a swirling motion this is called palleting the brush this evenly distributes the paint into the tips of the bristles. So now I'm going to come back up top and we're going to stencil. So I'm pouncing the border using a vertical motion. This uh, allows me to have a lot of control when I'm doing this border. Uh, it's a very simple technique. Anyone can do it. Let's take a peek here and see uh, it continues the border right across and now I'm gonna work it into the mitered edge. Uh, looks great, I, wrote, I lined up my rosette. Uh, yeah, we can remove this and look at that mitered corner. Okay, a little more paint on the brush. And now I'm going to work this side, going the other direction, and I'm keeping it centered, using my initial centered uh, reference point. And I'm gonna stencil this using the same pouncing or stippling technique. It's very fast, very easy to do. You can see anyone can do this. And I just continue right across, position it, and my self -adhes my uh, adhesive is working just fine still. A little more paint on my brush, and back up, pounce, pouncing this across, this border just looks great. This whole mirror is just turning out great. I'm going to pounce this, pull this off, and then work it right in to the mitered corner that I've taped off. Pounce this in. Super simple. You can swirl the brush a little bit as well. Not bad. That works fine too. And see here. Now we'll pull this and we finish into the miter with a rosette. Half a rosette here. Pop that off and we're looking great here. Pull the miter. We have a beautifully transformed IKEA mirror using cutting edge stencils Rajah stencil kit.